Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And this week we're in a car that's on its fourth go around the block at this point. It's the latest, totally new generation of the Hyundai Elantra GT. It's focused at young families, young drivers who are looking for the versatility of an SUV but want something that's a little smaller, a little bit zippier, sportier. And Hyundai says that they're really going after what they call car people here with this latest version, which is why, no surprise, they're shouting from any rooftop that they can find it seems that this thing's been European designed and then it's been tested on the Nürburgring. Of course as Hyundai does so well they're also offering up a lot of features at a really excellent price when you compare this to say something like the Volkswagen GTI another hot hatch from the other side of the pond. Now we were in the Elantra Sports sedan a few months ago on the channel and I have to say it really has been the surprise of the year it was zippy and fun and I want to see if this thing brings that same kind of driving thrill to the table so let's hop on board and see how the Elantra GT stacks up this week on Family Wheels. One thing that's always impressed me about the Korean brands of vehicles is just how much you get for your dollar. Standard equipment has always been excellent and when we look at the rest of the industry it seems like they're following suit. They're taking notice because what you're getting for your dollar from all the other brands is really getting improved upon as well these days. But for 2018 Hyundai's upping its game again in the Elantra GT. We now have a heated steering wheel as standard. Heated seats come standard although leather is an option that comes in the higher level trims unlike in the Elantra Sport sedan but then we also have an 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard and we also have a rear backup camera although it's a little bit grainy not the best clarity out of the rear backup camera out of this but it's still nice to have it standard rear cross traffic alert now comes standard for 2018 so if you have a vehicle crossing your path as you're backing out of a tight parking spot you're gonna get an alarm to warn you about that we also have blind spot monitoring standard for 20 so that's a good kit for a base price up here in Canada starting at just over $20,000. The thing that you're not getting at that price though is an automatic transmission that's going to cost you an extra $1,250 as well if you want to get this sportier 1.6 liter turbocharged engine you have to get into the Elantra GT Sport that base trim is only going to have a 2 liter 4 cylinder non turbo engine which is going to feel a little bit dull when I was driving around in the Subaru Impreza a few months ago the only engine available to you is also a 2 liter non turbo engine and it just didn't quite have the oomph that I was looking for out of a vehicle that gives you that kind of hot hatch experience. If you want to get into this car as we're testing it here this week, it comes in at just under $27,000 and with that you're getting leather, you're getting this turbocharged power plant which puts out 201 horsepower and 195 foot-pounds of torque so it's going to be a little bit more lively and you're also getting things like a panorama sunroof, larger 18-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights and tail lights, a dual tipped exhaust and you're getting a wireless charging bay for your smartphone too and then if you really want to get this Elantra GT Sport fully kitted up that's when you get a seven-speed dual clutch transmission lane keep assist autonomous braking built-in navigation that doesn't require your smartphone and ventilated seats for just over $30,000 now if it were my money, I'd go for exactly the car that we're testing here this week because for a dollar shy of $27,000 up here in Canada, you bump into that GT Sport trim. It gives you 39 more horsepower than that base engine and kind of brings the car to life and makes it a bit more interesting without affecting fuel economy that much. We're averaging this week 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which is right on the mark for what Hyundai suggests you should see in a mix of highway and city driving. And I haven't been taking it particularly easy on this car this week either but at this price point we're also getting a six-speed manual transmission and I think that's important because this is not a big engine it's just a small four-cylinder and to get the most that you possibly can out of it I think it's nice to have that connection to a six-speed manual that said I have had a chance to drive quite a few sticks recently in our test vehicles in the Toyota 86 sports coupe in the Subaru WRX both of those vehicles had this really mechanical short throw feel to their uh, 
uh, manual stick shifts and I just don't quite have that here in this car it feels like it's a bit more long throw a little bit sloppier and it doesn't quite have that same kind of connected feel as I saw in those other vehicles recently now like that Elantra Sport sedan we have the same power plant on board we also have the multi-link independent rear suspension so this thing corners really nicely and it's surprisingly eager for the size of engine that we have on board too. It really doesn't feel like a small four cylinder, but there was something in that sedan which just made it spark a little bit more. And I've been driving this thing for a week now, trying to put my finger on it, and I can't quite figure out what it was. But that sedan just came off the page a little bit more than this. Don't get me wrong, this is still a very fun car to drive, but there was just something a little bit more special as I cruised around in that sedan a few months ago. Go. But that said, it does share a lot of the same pluses and negatives that we saw in that vehicle. I like these sport seats. They hug you nicely through the corners. They're firm, but not too firm. I like the standard equipment, the general layout in the cabin, really excellent. One of the downsides that we saw in the Elantra Sport sedan as well, 66 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour with our decibel reader test as the interior cabin noise, so it's not a particularly quiet cabin. We also, like we see in so many other Hyundai vehicles, have these kind of cheaper plastics all through the cabin. One thing that I thought was made it a little more palatable in the Sport sedan was this carbon fiber inlay throughout the cabin, which kind of classed it up a little bit. We don't have that here in this car. Another thing that real driving purists might notice is that the sedan has an old school manual style e-brake whereas here in the GT it's a push button electronic e-brake just a little thing one other thing that I noticed in the sedan that we also have here is a fairly light steering feel and that means that if you're looking at this as more of a sport minded car you've driven around some of its European equivalents it might just feel a little bit light for your liking and that also kind of amplifies a bit of torque steer in this car because it is a front wheel drive vehicle when you really lay down the power, the wheel tends to kind of squirm around in your hands a little bit. We don't have that problem in something like the Subaru Impreza or the WRX because that's an all-wheel drive car. Meanwhile, all-wheel drive isn't even an option in this car and that's something you might want to keep in mind if you do a lot of winter driving up here in Canada. Well, one of the numbers that really jumped out at me when I was comparing the specs on this car versus the Hyundai Elantra Sport sedan was its overall length. The sedan is actually nine inches longer, which might not sound like that much, but it actually makes a big difference at every of the seating positions in this car. And I think that the second row suffers as a result. As a driver who's six foot two, if I've got the driver's seat adjusted to someone my height, there's no way I'm able to sit back here. However, if I've adjusted the driver's seat for my wife, who's five foot eight, I can, you know, have a, a decent amount of comfort here in the second row but it's still not great my headroom is pretty much maxed out and my legroom is still pretty close to maxed out too but that said car seats have been okay this week in front facing mode if you've got young kids back here they're gonna feel fairly comfortable in this vehicle it's when you flip around the car seat into rear facing mode that the sport sedan again beat out this car we've got 27 inches with the rear facing car seat in place from the back of the front seat cushion up to the glove box and that doesn't sound like a bad number, but the glove box is off on a fairly gradual angle, and that means that my knees are really bumping up against the glove box. I wouldn't feel comfortable driving around in that front passenger seat for any kind of stretch with a rear facing car seat in place. That's just the way it goes here in these smaller hatchbacks. Now another thing about a hatchback that sometimes can be a bit of a pain is trunk space. But one of the things that really surprised me when I was looking at the numbers was Hyundai said that there were 705 liters of trunk capacity here in this car. And that would blow away say the Subaru Impreza which has 500 89 liters and that still felt like a decent sized trunk when I was testing it a couple of months ago so I thought oh it's gonna be great no problem but I'm not entirely sure where Hyundai came up with that number because this actually feels like a much smaller trunk than we saw in the Impreza and it means that our standardized trunk test it's having a bit of a hard time cramming in here. We had to put our stroller uh, sideways because it wouldn't foot lengthwise. Our backpack, stroller, diaper bag, couple bags of groceries, and a soccer ball really filled this thing up pretty quickly. Another thing to keep in mind is that the load floor on it is fairly high. So even though it does have a bit more of a wagon type look to it, 
and is a bit more usable than, say, the Honda Civic hatch that we were in recently as well, a dog's still going to feel fairly pinched in back here, a large dog like ours at 75 pounds. However, I do find that because this does have a bit more of a boxy back end, that you are going to be able to fit a little bit more stuff in here than something like the GTI from Volkswagen or like that Honda Civic hatch. Now, if you do want to give yourself even more room, you can put down the second row seats. And I put my bike in here uh, a couple of days ago with the front tire off so that's good news if you want to go off for a mountain bike ride or something like that but one thing I was disappointed about was that there's no center pass through on this car so if say you're putting a pair of skis back here in the in the cargo area you're gonna to have to give up two of your passenger seats in the second row in order to do that because we only have a 60 40 split available to us now it's perhaps because of that number 705 liters when I was looking at it before I picked up this car kind of got me a bit excited but to be honest this trunk isn't anywhere as usable as I was hoping it it would be when we compare other vehicles in this category. Well, Hyundai's done it again for 2018, giving you more standard features and great value in this latest version of the Elantra GT. I would just temper your expectations a little bit with this car because despite the rather flashy ad campaign showing off just how sporty this thing can be zipping around a racetrack, it doesn't feel like a really true hot hatch, even with this turbocharged optional power plant on board. Instead, it's something that is a great balance between value, performance, because you have something that's still pretty zippy for getting around town. You also have good fuel efficiency, you get lots of standard features, and you get something that also looks kind of cool. I do quite like the looks on this car, but I would just make sure that you're not going into it with unrealistic expectations. Now, if you really want to see a true sport version of this car, the European edition of the Elantra GT, which is actually called the i30, is going to get treated to the N performance package here coming up this year. And that means that it's going to be certainly a bit more nuts, perhaps more in line with the likes of the Ford Focus RS or the Golf Type R. But we're not going to have that here in North America for a while. I asked Hyundai Canada whether it's something that we could see down the line. They said that it's certainly a possibility. They are ramping up their end division because they want to get a more performance oriented reputation, but we just have to wait for it a little longer. Until then, here we have this sort of middle ground hot hatch from Hyundai for 2018. And then next time I see you, we're in the latest addition to the subcompact crossover segment, the Toyota CHR. So we can see how that one stacks up about seven days from now. Until then, have a great week.